Dobar dan, danes se bo v stand-up intervju pogovarjala z Viktorjo. Viktor je bil tle pri nas v desetki. Intervju bo zanimiv, bo po angliškem jeziku, tako da uživite, vse vidva. Hello, Viktor. Hello, you all right? <laughs> this is the start. Okay, fantastic. Oh so, my. Uh, so uh, you, you've started in uh, stand-up comedy in Britain or did you do yeah. it before? I started in, uh, in London about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's, uh, that, that was one of the main reasons why I moved to London, to uh, watch comedy and see how, you know, uh, uh, people in one of the best towns for comedy uh, do it. It's, uh, I really like it because the, the, the level is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite things, like when I think about uh, w why, because I, I, I have to remind myself why I'm still in London <laughs> <laughs> very often. Can you make a living uh, with doing uh, stand-up in London? Started to, yes. Uh, but it's been uh, an uphill struggle. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, so now you're touring Europe. Yeah. You've just yeah. Uh, visited Balkans. Thank you for that. Now you're doing Northern Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, what I, I was trying to say about London is yeah. I really enjoy the fact that uh, uh, I get to be in front of people that probably like a few days earlier, they've seen their favorite comedian of their life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like 20 years ago, they saw Bill, Billy Connolly at their prime. And now I'm in front of them and I have to impress them. So I, 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 that's, that's one of the reasons why I, I like London. Uh, I've seen you've been at the Comedy Cellar as well. The Comedy Cellar? Store. Yeah, yeah, store, yeah. Store, store, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah the, you, uh, there's, they have like a, a contest every month. Uh, it's called the Gong Show uh, and you need to survive five minutes on stage. It's uh, probably the most aggressive show uh, ever. And you won it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But ah. on, my th <laughs> on my third attempt. Still, still very good, huh? No, y yeah. You're doing yeah. It with the professionals. Come on, you probably yeah. in tour uh, when you're performing around England and London. You probably seen your favorite comedians on the same stage as you are as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like uh, not a couple of days ago, but a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, for example, like the the comedy store stage for me, there are two people who've been on that stage. Uh, uh, there is, and they're both recorded. They're all on, uh, both on YouTube. Seinfeld and Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> have all both been on that stage yeah so i'm like oh my god yeah, i don't know if goosebumps. louis uh, was on that stage but i've been on a stage where louis was uh and <laughs> the, the club used to be so proud that louis went there <laughs> oh, now and it's then like, like <laughs> a, f a few months left that were like <laughs> so um russell howard was also here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the the british people are uh, quite open to diversity and yeah. is there or is that perhaps you, the Eastern Bloc comedian right now, yeah. who's hot? Uh, no, it's not a thing yet, because uh, we're still, it's, it's still fresh. We're still uh, like the people that people, uh, we're still like the, uh, the cultures that people complain about. So it used to be the Polish, but now the Polish, you know, right? like a Polish yeah. comedian might come in and uh, uh, really break some molds. Uh, but uh, so far, I'm too exotic. Ah, still, yeah, yeah. still. Yeah, because it's uh, it's like it's a country that they didn't uh, they didn't conquer. Ah. So until now, until the Polish, it been just people from their former colonies yeah, coming yeah. to to England in like huge numbers, and now it's like a new phenomenon where they don't know who we are. But they the ask like questions like, "What do you guys eat over there?" Ah, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the Fringe, isn't there a Borscht part of the festival as well? Yes, uh, that's a show that I uh, organized with Radu Isak, uh, the other you Romanian comedian. You're the organizer of yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Ah, great. Yeah. Uh, and it's a show that we organize for Eastern Europeans. Uh, the show is in English for the British or international multicultural audiences. Uh, so we can show people that we, we can do dick jokes as well. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah. And from Slovenia, Eva Wirtz was there yes, last year. Eva, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was actually last night. She, yeah, she yeah, yeah. opened the, the show. She's very, uh, I really like Eva. She's very nice. She's, fu she's funny. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's nice to see like the local comedians and it's nice to meet them like in other places. And then when I come here, it's like, oh, you live here. This is so <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she showed me like the, the pizza places and the burek places. So it's, it's, it's very nice to know someone locally. Uh, but how is it to do uh, Edinburgh show? Uh, 
it's um, I, I I don't know what to compare it with. It's it's basically like uh, almost a month of being in a camp with other comedians, and uh, it's it's probably one of my favorite things in comedy because it's for a month. It's intense. Like you you do all sorts of shows, like multiple shows a day. <coughs> And there was a guy last year who beat the record of the number of spots within the festival. He did, uh, is a guy from, I think it's Liverpool or Manchester, uh, Kyle, Kyle Legacy. He did 230 shows. Ooh. Yeah. Even and I think he was away for like two days for a friend's wedding, <laughs> which makes it even <laughs> weirder <laughs> as a record. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so you can do crazy stuff like that. It's, it's fantastic. There's all sorts of shows. There's all sorts of theme shows. Uh, there's Rose Battle that I, I really like. Uh, and uh, all sorts of like weird shows where like, s you're on with other comedians and they, they do their jokes and then you have to go on stage and do what <laughs> you think their act was. Yeah, ah. all sorts of weird stuff, man. Like everyone does, does whatever they, crosses their mind and they think someone's going to be interested in the show. They do all sorts of weird games, all sorts of fucking... Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, it's the greatest thing. But it's getting more and more uh, in, uh, unex in, inaccessible. Because mm -hmm. Inac yeah, yeah. um, it's getting way expensive. Are the prices too high? Uh, very high. And they're uh, like pushing uh, out like uh, poor working class, uh, just normal comedians. And it's just the people who can afford to, to do the venues and pay for... PR and promotion and whatnot, uh, but uh, yeah, I've I've just read that uh, the Pleasants, which is one of the big like uh, companies that runs some venues, in they've increased their fees again. Ugh. Yeah, and it's pushing out like comedians, but also like audiences. Like last year, I think was probably the first year where uh, people actually felt like a difference in in the turnout when it came to audiences probably because of brexit probably because of like economic difficulties people can afford to go there the accommodation is hugely expensive uh so if you know someone with a couch that's that's your best friend for life <laughs> um but yeah it's fantastic have you ever been uh no 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 uh, but a couple of friends have already been there yeah and uh they said they have free shows free shows as well yeah, yeah, so yeah. There's but no they're still you the can just check it out yeah they're free for the audiences yeah, yeah no, it's still, still expensive <laughs> for the comedians yeah. to put on yeah. And uh, do you, I don't know, pass around a bucket or something? Yeah. to usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of shows are uh, like bucket collection uh, based, but that's like a staple of Edinburgh. Uh, that's how it, from what I understand, that's how it started. That what, that's what made Edinburgh great, because it was just all sorts of people that are not known. And uh, yeah, uh, if, uh, if they do a show and the audiences at the end go like, this is w was worth like 10 pounds or five pounds or whatever coins they have or sometimes they put like foreign money and or like condoms or <laughs> all sorts of weird st stuff whatever they think the show was worth yeah, yeah. so it's it's it feels like uh, it's it's a way for a, like a young comedian to kind of prove themselves to a crowd it's like you didn't pay anything you, you you did give me the benefit of the doubt to to come here and uh watch this weird show that i'm putting on and at the end, do you think it was worth something? If you, if you think it was, just give me some money. And it feels like very, uh, very honest, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't pay before you see the show. And it's, you, you're, you're, you get the good information how much you're worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you have like a gauge of, yeah. 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 Is, is the show uh, well received? Are people getting anything out of it? Are they feeling at the end that it was worth their time and stuff like that. Uh, the friends who were at Edinburgh told me that, uh, okay, the A-listers, A-list celebrities use it as a promotional tool. Yeah. But uh, even B-listers use it like, okay, here's my show, book me around the, U the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you use it for the purpose as well? No, I, I've, uh, years ago, uh, when I did my first solo show, I was, um, uh, was kind of thinking at the back of my mind about like, maybe some uh, attention for from the industry uh, and nobody came Ugh. yeah uh, but that was kind of an eye-opener for me because it meant like uh, I can do whatever I want and I don't nobody gives a shit you, you have nothing to lose exactly and I'm like okay I'm gonna talk the whole hour about vaginas because that's what I really want to do <laughs> <laughs> honestly yeah and, and it was probably it was a good show because you were honest <laughs> 
And I, d- I don't know, but it's <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to to to. So the reason why I go there, it's because of the audiences. There's so many people, like apparently between four and six million every year that go to the fringe. Uh, and I do it on the free fringe, which means that I get to play in front of the audiences that, you know, Stuart Lee is playing. Yeah, yeah. All right? And Stuart Lee is a legend as well. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. But he, you know, um, of course, he <laughs> does the, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really complicated conversation. But that's why I do it. It's because the audiences, the, the, the many shows, the just one of my favorite things is just walking around and kind of going like oh look i know that guy he's a comedian and you go and talk to them for like two three minutes and they're going through the same experiences as as you are they're tired they're overworked their throat doesn't work anymore yeah yeah. Uh, and then you have like a little moment with another comedian and then you start walking again and then you see another one and then you see a group of them and then you know what i mean it's like all the time you see people that you you know and uh, you share this 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 experience with amongst like a, a pool of people that don't understand <laughs> how it feels to 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 do shows and yeah. be be tired and kind of wake up going like okay i need to fly i need to go and do that show do that show do that show oh, i'm running late i need to run i need to take a uber i need to you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. um yeah uh, how do you prepare for this intensive month I you just gig as much as possible there's no there's no way to to prepare because it, it, the month itself is p- the preparation. Sometimes people go to Edinburgh with like a finished show, um, but a lot of people just go there with kind of an idea, a concept, like a loose thing, and by the end, you finish the show because you do it every, every day. Um, and uh, by the end, it's like an hour that kind of works. You figure it out during, during the festival. So uh, it's it's a workout, but also like sh- showing off yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's kind of a mixed uh, bag. Was this material you, you uh, performed yas- yesterday for the Slovenian audience part of your last mm-hmm. show, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, nationality doesn't matter. Yeah, it's yeah. the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a very nice bit, man. Ah, thank know. you very much. But yeah, it's uh, uh, the the one of the models in in the UK is to do a different show every year. Uh, but uh, what I'm uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking I'm every time like every year every every day every month I, I write new stuff, and mm-hmm. the things that I like I'm I'm adding to the show and I'm throwing out things that I don't like. So every year it's like between I don't know kind of half of it changes. Yeah, so it's and evolving. It's yeah, 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 yeah. And. Uh, what about the time that you're not on the fringe? Do you tour just London or do you go around Britain? Just anywhere. The, the, uh, the or do you go around Europe? Yeah, now I'm starting to. Because it's, uh, uh, it's surprising to see that there's uh, people who speak English in non-English speaking countries. Which uh, uh, was something that I, kind of I knew in my head, but I didn't know in my you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. experience to kind of see, oh, there's actually people here who speak English and would go to an English speaking show with their friends or with their partners. Uh, w- one of the things that I really like about the shows in Europe is there's people in like strange relationships, like he's from China, she's from Venezuela. They don't yeah. know each other's language, but they understand each other through English. And that's their relationship is based on yeah, yeah. Uh, communicating in English. And when they want to do something together, they go to a thing that they both understand. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I, I like that kind of... Th- uh, That's good, yeah. uh, bringing people together with the yeah, language yeah. and making, making them laugh. Yeah, That's like last good. night, a lo- mo- I think some of the crowds were, uh, s- some of the couples were uh, both Slovenian, but some of them were like people from different countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, th- I think that's how they, they, they connect through, through English. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Uh, do you remember Tin Vodopivlitz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he came to the uh, Eastern European Comedy Festival we did in, uh, in London. With uh, I did uh, with Radu. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think two years ago in 2018. Was that the same year he did seven days in seven languages as well? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, he he, he could be. He yeah. Be, yeah. Now he's a, a father. Oh, yeah. congratulations! Yeah, yeah. congratulations, Tim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he's watching this. If he's a father right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he the child is crying over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Tim is like, oh. oh, are they saying anything about me over there? Um, 
uh, how hard is is it to get spots uh, like paid gigs, not just open mics in London? Well, that's the difficult part because there's so many comedians and the level is so high. It takes a really long time to get good enough that people will give you five minutes and then 10 minutes and then 15. So the rate of progression yeah. is very, very slow. But uh, for uh, a I think for a comedian that's starting out, it's it's a it's a healthy kind of environment because uh, if you can't uh, deliver, uh, they won't put you on. So because they have so many other yeah. But on on the other hand, there are just so many comedians that even if you can deliver like a good set, uh, it's very difficult to kind of get it in between the. There's every promoter is different. Every club is different. Everyone has their own like rate of promotion, yeah, yeah. progression. Uh, they paid in different in different manners. Uh, um, so yeah, you can't live. Uh, it's or it's close to extremely difficult to live out of just gigging in London. So everyone's just traveling the country, uh, and now the Europe is becoming uh, uh, viable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, viable. Look at it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you do you have a group of I don't know comedians who y you do those uh, British tours together, like rent a car or borrow a no. car and go? No, uh, it's because it's it one by one and uh, like tours. Uh, people do tours in the UK if they're signed. If because uh, yeah. uh, uh, like the European thing that I'm doing my uh, here is everything I'm done doing myself. Like earlier <laughs> when you came, I was uh, trying to promote <laughs> the, uh, a show because I have to do everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, but in the UK, the people who usually do tours, they're uh, organized by an agent, by uh -huh. managers, by, by companies. So they, they have connections with the venues. There are a few who do it independently, who just uh, like contact the venues independently and they, they do shows like that. Um, uh, but usually whenever you're traveling with other comedians, you're traveling to like an out-of-town gig, someone has a car, and it's like two, three, four comedians in one car traveling to a gig. But it's different people every time. So it's not like a, a core group of uh, uh -huh. comedians. Uh, this, like creating teams and going to, uh, traveling, this is more of a, like con a continental thing because here comedy is not developed. Usually people can't carry an hour by themselves, yeah, so yeah. they get their friends and they split a, a, a show and everyone's doing 15, 20 minutes uh, uh, and that's how they carry a show. That's the model that people in Romania d are, are doing, um, because the the the, um, the scene is is uh, still uh, young, it's still fresh. Uh, people don't really know that much, so it's it's very difficult for one single comedian to carry a show in a place where people probably have never seen live comedy ever in their life. Uh, so you have to teach the audience what stand-up is basically. Yeah, uh, in, in continental hard. Europe. Yeah. The, the advantage in the UK, everyone, like, yeah. they've seen comedy. You yeah, know. They have it, had it for a couple of decades now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in, 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 in Europe, they need to teach the audiences what comedy is. Uh, and it's very difficult for one person to carry the entire show. So it's actually good that uh, people get to see a diversity of comedians. Uh, what I like about like um, um, shows with uh, multiple comedians is um, if you don't like the first one, you'll probably like the second or the third. Someone, yeah. you, you know what I mean? You're going to get yeah, something yeah, yeah. for your money. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, s you mentioned a couple of times you're doing this uh, fringe story with your partner. Do you have a, like a, a plan for the uh, Eastern Bloc comedians to do something in England, or is it just like a tool for for gigging? Uh, so uh, me and Radu. Oh, is this Hare Krishna? Yes. Oh, this is nice. Uh, but the people cannot hear it. There's Hare, yeah. Hare Krishna outside. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sure people can hear it. Huh? Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Radu and myself, we've been constantly running uh, an Eastern Euro European show in London every month. Uh, we're trying to scale it to do it more often. Uh, we are now in talks to do the show again in Edinburgh. Uh, so any East Eastern European comedians that are traveling to Edinburgh uh, and would like to jump on, on the show, is, is they're very welcome. Just get in contact with either me or Radu. Uh, and, uh, because we're trying to like in, uh, meet the comedians uh, who are doing it in English, because uh, everyone's just interesting. And uh, what I really like is everyone's kind of going through similar experience, especially in in continental Europe. Everyone's watching 
uh, Seinfeld and Chris Rock and Carlin and Pryor uh, pirated. Yeah. <laughs> right on 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 the in, like yeah. illegally downloading or watching it for free on YouTube, and I went through the same experience. I assume you yep. <laughs> watched. Yeah. <laughs> And Pablo Francisco yeah. through Emule or something. Yeah, yeah. Comic Central Kazakh. presents. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Everyone goes through the same experience. Yep, yep. Uh, and everyone like has to teach uh, their their own uh, countries how stand up works. Uh, everyone's like uh, struggling with like old actors who think they're stand up comedians who because yeah. they can't do anything <laughs> in their profession. They go like, oh, I'm doing stand up comedy now, and they just, just ruin the, the what stand up is. Uh, and you know, people need to go and repair all the damage done. So everyone kind of goes through a similar, si yeah, yeah. similar experience. Uh, and it's nice to meet people like that. In Slovenia, it just turned. It used to be like a couple of years ago, very popular for mono com comedies to turn into stand-up performances. And mm -hmm. now it's turned like now even the stand-uppers do it like mono comedy because it's more serious, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. People get uh, used to it. Uh, the British, uh, yeah. we, we see uh, stand-up on TV yeah. and we, I don't know, imagine venues as 500 seaters or, uh, or more, you know, yeah. these big things, these colossus, but how are, how, uh, how are the venues for these like, small shows in London? Oh, it depends. There's uh, like uh, small, smaller venues compared to like the big theater, you know what I mean? For example, like the comedy store is 400 people. It's it's like it's it's yeah. a perfect room. It's like it's it's specifically yeah. made for for stand up. Uh, so that's kind of the, the 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 middle ground. So it can go up from there. You know, you do theater, but that's for people you know who are on TV, who have like a huge presence. You but know let's get let's get down to re reality. Yeah. <laughs> but under that, there's like smaller rooms and there's like smaller clubs. There, London is full of all sorts of like venues, uh, be there uh, like specific comedy venues. For example, the Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a um, uh, angel comedy. There's like a group of comedians who were running a show uh, in, in upstairs from a pub. And, and they still run that venue. It's still constantly like doing doing shows. But they bought a house like close by, mm -hmm. and they transformed it into a comedy club. Oh, nice! Yeah, man, it's like really cool. They did like a Kickstarter project, and comedians and everyone like chipped in. And uh, like if you go to 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 the Bill Murray, which is the club that they they have now, it's like on uh, on chairs, on tables, on everything. There's the name of the person who donated the money that they could afford to buy that chair. There's like bricks on the wall with people's names on it. <laughs> nice. They donated one pound but it uh, bought them the brick yeah you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah yeah, yeah. and it's very nice vibe and it's like an 80 90 seater um uh, eddie Izzard does work in progress there daniel kitson does work in progress which uh, i don't know if n daniel kitson is not known internationally but he's like a legend in the uk he's like is yeah, yeah, yeah one of the one of the weird uh, people who n doesn't do TV, he doesn't do, uh, there's nothing on YouTube, there's just one like clip from Just For Laughs from like 15 years ago, and that's it. There's nothing about this guy. A, a pure stand-up comedian, doesn't he care about anything. He fills any room in, in the UK, any room, anywhere you go, he, he goes. Yeah. I heard like a friend of mine uh, uh, talking about him, apparently he went to a show and he did an hour and a half of audience interaction, break, and an hour and a half the show. Whoa, three hours. That's Whoa, th that's and see, you don't know yeah. this guy. Nope. nope. Yeah, never exactly. heard of him. <laughs> uh, so there's this, 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 this club, and we, we, we do the Rose Battle there, and it's a perfect room for Rose Battle. And uh, there's any, all sorts of other like, rooms in, in between the comedy store and this. And there's rooms that sit even smaller uh, crowds. And there's new uh, clubs, like Vauxhall and uh, South Kensington that are developing, it's like groups of comedians, like everyone's doing like a different, uh, takes care of a different night and they do like a different theme and they do all sorts of, you know. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's rooms with, uh, like there's an open mic that I really like, it's called Just Suggesters, fits like 25 people. <laughs> it's fantastic, it's, yeah. it's in a basement, it's like arch vault, uh, like uh -huh. brick walls, it's, 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 it's lovely. You know what I mean, like 20, 30 seater rooms, when they're full, they're really yeah. nice and that's where you learn how to to do comedy there's also rooms where it's just comedians 
but that's where you learn how to like say things like the first time you say things some sh it shouldn't be in front of a crowd yeah because yeah. why would you disappoint normal people <laughs> disappoint other comedians because they're fine yeah. they're broken already yeah yeah so there's there's all sorts of levels there's people what i've noticed that is a thing that people do in in london and that they're starting to do in like uh, some of the big bigger english-speaking scenes like berlin and amsterdam is people just find a room in a coffee shop in anything like where we are now can can we do a performance here it's like can we get like 10 15 people in in here they can you know we can try some jokes we can learn how to to write jokes we can learn how to perform in front of uh, a crowd and then you go to the next level, right? Yeah, but these conditions are really hot because there's no stage proper lighting, you know. Of course. And no mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to be funny amongst some people who are yeah, just you having a drink, you know. What? No, <laughs> it's like when you go out with your friends, you're still funny. Yeah, then. of course, of course. You don't have a mic, you don't have lights, you're still... F yeah, but the st uh, 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 stand-up not a performance as well. Yeah, but it's very close to, to that, you know, hanging out with your friends and telling them stupid jokes. Yeah, true, true. Uh, That's where it comes from. That's, it's yeah, it's yeah. like a, um, um, a chisel, not a chisel, but it's, yeah, it's like a controlled version of that. Even playing like a huge theater, it, it's still like a version of, hey, can I tell you a joke? Yeah, uh, you know basically, I mean? it is, yeah. And who has the better dick, dick jokes? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Uh, O'Connell was uh, talking about the in front of uh, the curtain performers. Have yeah. you ever Bill Connolly? Bill Connolly, yeah. No. Uh, what, what, what is it? Uh, it when know. he started, when his grandmother used to take him to theaters to yeah. listen to music, yeah. the comedians back in the day, which was not stand up comedians as we mm -hmm. now know, was only the guy who was in front of the curtain entertaining yeah. the crowd while the bands were changing gear. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was it in Britain. Yes, and those and communal uh, theaters after the war that they uh, made for people to come together back yeah. and to heal. Yeah, and that's that's where the British comedy like comes have from. Have you watched the uh, the fantastic Mrs. Maisel or something like that? Nope. The it's it's like a show. I don't know if it's on Netflix or somewhere. It's on the internet. You can pirate it. Yeah, um, and it's about uh, like this lady who's contemporary with Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. Lenny Bruce, that's he started in strip clubs. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 there was also like a circuit of com comedians doing jokes, but everyone had the same jokes. Yeah, yeah and yeah. they were talking behind, doing this uh, behind this, uh, yeah. like in the green room. Are you going to do the jokes about parrots? Okay, I'll do the jokes <laughs> about bread. You know yeah. what I mean? There was a blackboard, yeah. and uh, s someone was striking out the jokes yeah. that everybody told already. But yeah, <laughs> like, but then uh, Mort Saul, Dick Gregory, and Lenny Bruce came yeah. along, yeah. and they m made it personal. They made it political. They made it introspective. They made it, you know, uh, philosophical. Um, yeah, they had something to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and they wrote their own material. Uh, what are your aspirations, your wishes for your future? Do you have any plans or just wishes for? Um, I don't know, man. I'll, uh, uh, I hope I can just tell more jokes in front of more people. That's all I care about is just jokes and uh, uh, just kind of going to a crowd. Hey, is it really weird? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, hey, can I tell you this? Is this all right? And that, I don't know. That's just what makes uh, like uh, produces joy. It's uh, uh, for me. That's and a very noble, noble goal. Very Ugh. noble goal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you want to call it that. What? <laughs> if you want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, you do a lot of work with your material. It's obvious that you do as a lot of crowd work as well. Oh well, uh, when I'm, uh, it's it's a solo show, uh, I have to because it's. Uh, I want to talk to the crowd and see wh what they are. And you invite them closer to you, you know. Yeah. You m m the, the thing that you did yesterday, yeah. fuck, man, this was great. Ah, that's very kind, man. Yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, uh, I need to, I, I feel like um, it, it helps the show because the show is based on people's identity, what they do, what they think they are, what they think they're from, and what kind of vibe they, they, mm -hmm. they bounce off. And sometimes uh, I connect the jokes with like, oh, I remember when you said that earlier. Well, what about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, because the show is about like what we think of ourselves. Uh, so I need to ask people what they think of themselves in order for you know, to kind of create an idea of, okay, this is yeah, yeah. what we've seen so far. And this is my idea. This is what I think about that concept. But if you ever play a hundred seater or more, you probably can't do all the people. 
and I can't do them individually, yeah. but it's still, hey, who here identifies uh, as whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. perfect. And perfect. then it helps the show. You know what I mean? It's like, I know, it, and people, as, aside from me knowing who's in the crowd, it's good for them to know who else is in the crowd mm -hmm, in order mm -hmm. to, because some of the jokes are very like aggressive. And if you don't know that everyone's like fine in the crowd, it's just other people, you have yeah. an idea of who they are. Uh, they're not just strangers. I feel like th my jokes, they're, they're just a bit easier. And people go like, I understand now. It's, it's just ironic. It's just, you know, he's just yeah, saying yeah. all sorts of stupid <laughs> things. But then if it's like, oh, I don't know who these people are. Are they the people that he's talking about? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I should laugh about this. You know what I mean? Uh, how fixed is your next hour for no, or the next show of, or the Fringe Festival? You said that you recycle, like, you, know, you evolve 50%. Yeah, are yeah. you now satisfied with the show or you're still going to keep oh growing yeah, it's it? Constantly, it's constantly changing. I'm constantly going like, oh, what about this about Jesus? Or, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? All sorts of, all, all sorts of things. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. I'm throwing things out. I'm adding new. Sorry. Yeah, no I'm problem. adding new things and um, yeah, I don't know how it's, it how, how it's gonna be because I have uh, like a lot of notes. I'm getting to London on Monday evening, and I'm going to uh, to an open mic because I have some <laughs> about like uh, yeah, I've been writing all sorts of ideas uh, while on the train, uh, like traveling through Europe, and I want to see, I want to see what people think if 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 there's anything in there. I guess there is because you have a very special eye for the detail. Ah, it's, yeah. Yeah, and you're very yeah. analytical, and it's good in a, in a good way, in a good way. Um, and I uh, hope to see you here next year, perhaps. Yeah, I'd love to to come back. It's a really nice town. It's it feels like it's from a fairy tale. Oh, yeah, but just this little central part, because then yeah. you you cross the barrier <laughs> and it's communism uh, that yes. I remember from home. Perfect, perfect. Uh, and the cheese uh, burek. It's been one of the greatest things I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> it's just delicious. Do you know the Olympia one? Of course. Yeah, so if anyone <laughs> travels through this place, just go to Olympia Bu Burek. It's, 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 it's warm and fresh and wet and disgusting looking. And it just has a weird te texture because uh, it's very like wet. <laughs> I can't describe it at anything yeah. else. But it's delicious. It's like, this, that's what I miss in, in London, like good cheese pastry. Oh. I know, yeah, 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 because the, the British, yeah, with all their cuisine, yeah, has has some improvement to do. Yeah, yeah. they have cheese pastry, but they've added onion because <sighs> it should be right. Because yeah. like, who wants filo pastry and cheese, right? One yeah, of the yeah. greatest things ever in invented. <laughs> no, no, no. We the British need to be a bit different from the French. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have anything special for our listeners? Because uh, you have to go on the trip soon. Uh, yeah, there is no God, don't believe in communism, and uh, plant trees. Perfect. Right? Because people don't plant trees anymore. Remember when we were children and uh, at school they used to tell us that the only way to save the ozone layer was planting trees? Like, the ozone layer is fine, but we still need to plant trees, right? Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. So, uh, enjoy. Uh, we'll see you on the interwebs and in Slovenia next year. Yeah. Have thanks, a nice time. Thanks for, for uh, welcoming me in your, uh, your country, guys. It's been, uh, this has been very nice. Thank you very much for, uh, uh, for Thank this. you, Christian. See you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.